press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Namaste children, let us continue with the topic evolution. In our last class, we studied about the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and the factors which affects Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. In this class, we study about a brief account of evolution and also origin and evolution of man. So, before going to this, we will study, we will know about geological time scale. Geological time scale is nothing but study of evolution based on study of fossils. It's nothing but study of evolution is study of history of evolution based on study of fossils. So that is divided into different period, uh, different time that is epoch is the smallest unit in that geological time scale. Next is spirit, the next is era and the largest one is eon, largest one is eon, understood. So coming to the brief accounts of evolution, so 2000 million years ago, the first cellular life form was originated in water, it was originated in water and they are able to release oxygen like what we see in photosynthesis reaction and these unicellular organisms gave rise to multicellular organisms. First what we discussed in Stanley Miller experiments was the monomers were formed then polymers then once the DNA form the replication start like that unicellular organisms started grouping together and they gave rise to multicellular organisms. So like this unicellular organisms gave rise to multicellular organisms that occurred nearly 2000 million years ago. So that era is protozoic era, Proto in the protozoic era around 2000 million years ago first cellular life form arised, arose in water and they were able to release oxygen and these unicellular organisms gave rise to multicellular organisms. And nearly 500 million years ago invertebrates were formed and active and between 400 to 600 million years ago the first land organisms like plants were found and nearly 400 million years ago arthro arthropods were found and they are active and nearly 350 million years ago jawless fishes were formed. So they have the stout with strong fins they move to land and they go back to water. We thought they were extinct, but the silocanth log fin fishes like silocanth was caught in South Africa in the year 1938. In the year 1938, the silocanth fish was caught in South Africa. These log fin fishes evolved into amphibians and these were considered as ancestors of modern day frog and salamanders. Log fin fishes were considered as ancestors of modern day frogs and salamanders. And nearly 320 million years ago sea weeds and few plants were found. And these amphibians gave rise to reptiles. These amphibians evolved into reptiles. Reptiles lay thick egg. The shell of the egg, is, egg was thick that will not dry when exposed to sunlight. Whereas the amphibians eggs uh, have thin shell and they dry when the when the egg is exposed to sunlight. So like this amphibians gave rise to reptiles. So how means the reptiles lay thick shell eggs so that will not dry when the eggs were exposed to sunlight that the amphibians gave rise to reptiles. So this all the uh, origin of amphibians, log 
finishes everything we see in the paleozoic era it is seen in the paleozoic era so in devonian period of paleozoic era is considered as golden age of fishes it's considered as golden age of fishes the next 200 million years ago reptiles were formed so some of the reptiles went back to sea or went back to water to develop like a fish like reptile that is called ichthyosaurus this one is ichthyosaurus during that period giant ferns like pteridophytes were present and they fell and they form a coal deposits they form a coal deposits and during this 200 million years ago reptiles like dinosaurs dominated the earth so land the biggest or the largest land reptile was tyrannosaurus rex tyrannosaurus rex which is having 20 feet high and rather like teeth so after this in the this what we uh, see reptiles they are present in mesozoic era this mesozoic era is considered as golden age of reptiles because that during that period the reptiles dominated the earth hagagi so this mesozoic era is considered as golden age of reptiles and 65 million years ago we see sudden extinction of dinosaurs and during that era origin of first mammals like shrew were seen so the extinction of dinosaurs was uh, occurred 65 million years ago some may some are telling that all these reptiles were evolved into birds and some will tell due to the climatic changes on the earth the dinosaurs have become extinct but the exact cause we don't know for the extinction of dinosaurs so 65 million years ago extinction of dinosaurs occurred and origin of first mammals like shrew was uh seen in that era that is coenozoic era so this fossils of this first mammals like shrew were very small and during that period the we see mammals in south america uh, evolution of some mammals like hippopotamus horse rabbit etc that we see in south america and also due to the continental drift south when north america joined the south america the south american fauna were dominated by the north american fauna and due to this the continental drift pouch mammals in australia were survived due to the lack of competition from other mammals whereas south america animals were extinct or reduced in their number because there was competition by the animals which by the north american fauna whereas in australia for the pouch mammals there was no competition that's why they survived pouch mammals in australia they survived because of the absence of competition from other mammals whereas the mammals of south america were reduced in their number or they some become extinct due to the competition by the animals from north america so that all we observed in the years nearly 65 million years ago understood and this coenozoic era is considered as golden age of mammals so this is about brief accounts of evolution so nearly 2000 million years ago first cellular life form occurred in sea and that unicellular organisms gave rise to multicellular organisms that we observed in protozoic era 
next 500 million years ago invertebrates were formed and at two between 400 to 600 million years ago the first land organisms like plants were formed and nearly 400 million years ago arthropods were formed and they invaded the land and nearly 350 million years ago jawless fishes low fin fishes were formed and that coelacanth was caught in south africa in the year 1938 and these low fin fishes gave rise to amphibians and these low fin fishes were ancestors for present day frogs and salamanders so in nearly 320 million years ago sea weeds and few plants were formed so this all occurred in paleozoic era so Devonian period in Paleozoic era is considered as golden age of fishes and nearly 200 million years ago reptiles were formed that means amphibians evolved into reptiles, reptiles lay thick egg shell so that the egg will not dry when it is exposed to sunlight whereas the amphibians they lay thin shell eggs that will dry when exposed to sunlight so these amphibians gave rise to reptiles so during 200 million years ago reptiles dominated earth some of the reptiles went back to sea to develop to evolve like a fish like reptiles that is called ichthyosaurus and during that era chain ferns like pteridophytes they were present and they fell and they form a coal deposits on the earth and the largest land reptile uh, the largest dinosaurus land dinosaurus was Tyrannosaurus rex nearly 20 feet height and they have dragon like teeth so Mesozoic era is considered as golden age of reptiles golden age of reptiles where Coisnozoic era is considered as golden age of mammals. Golden age of mammals. So in the 65 million years ago suddenly we saw extinction of dinosaurs and origin of first mammals like shrew the first mammals would be observed shrew they have their body size was very small and due to continental drift the south american fauna were dominated by north american fauna and due to this continental drift the pouched mammals in australia were survived due to the uh, lack of competition from other mammals understood and you should remember this Coenozoic era is considered as golden age of mammals Mesozoic era is considered as golden age of reptiles and Devonian period in Paleozoic era is considered as golden age of fishes and for your competitive Coelacanth was caught in the year 1938 in South Africa that is very important point and low fin fishes were evolved into amphibians and pteridophytes form coal deposits that is very important point largest land dinosaur was dinosaurus was Tyrannosaurus rex height was 20 feet and dragon like teeth and ichthyosaurus it is a reptile went back to water to evolve into fish like reptiles these points you have to remember for your competitive exams next we'll move with the origin and evolution of man
So on this, based on so based on paleo anthropology, it is nothing but it is a branch of paleontology where we study the human fossils. We study the history of evolution of man by studying fossils. That is nothing but paleo anthropology. So, in, it is a branch of paleontology which involves, which includes the study of history of evolution of man by studying fossils. Understood? So, under this origin and evolution of man, we have the first stage is Dryopathicus and Dramapathicus where primates lived fifteen million years ago. Where primates lived fifty million years ago. Dryopathicus and Dramapathicus were primates which lived. 50 million years ago. So, the study of, of fossils clearly tells that origin of man occurred in origin of man occurred in Central Asia, China, Java and Shivalik hills in India. Shivalik hills in India. So, the study of fossils tells us that origin of man occurred in Central Asia, China, Java and Shivalik hills in India. So, according to that fossil study, the first stage was Dryopathicus and Ramapathicus. They were primates lived nearly 15 million years ago. In this, Dryopathicus were more ape-like, whereas Ramapathicus were more man-like. They walk like they have air on their body and they walk like gorilla and chimpanzees. So, these Dryopathicus and Ramapathicus, they have air on their body and they walk like gorilla and chimpanzees. And the fossils of Ramapathicus were found in Shivali Hills, Shivali Hills in India. Fossils of Ramapathicus were found in Shivali Hills in India, and few man-like bones were found. Few man-like bones were discovered or extracted discovered or extracted in Ethiopia and Tanzania, Ethiopia and Tanzania. This evidence tells, this evidences tells that some Nearly 3 to 4 million years ago, 3 to 4 million years ago, man like primates were walked in Eastern Africa. Man like primates were walked in Eastern Africa. And they were not more than 4 feet, the height was not more than 4 feet. Height was not more than 4 feet, but they walk erect, but they walk erect. Their brain capacity was nearly 300 cc. This is about Dryopathicus and Ramapathicus. So, Dryopathicus where they resemble more head like, Ramapathicus where resemble like man like. They were primates lived 15 million years ago. 
and thousands of Ramapathikas were found in Shivali hills in India and few man like bones were found or extracted in Ethiopia and Tanzania. This evidence tells that nearly 3 to 4 million years ago man like primates were walked in eastern Africa and their height was not more than 4 feet. They are not taller than 4 feet but they walk erect. They walk erect. Understood? This is about Dryopathicus and Ramapathicus. So the next stage is Astralo. Peticus. So, as the fossils of Australopithecus were found in Africa, fossils were found in Africa. So, nearly two million years ago, Australopithecus were lived in. They lived in Eastern African grasslands eastern african grasslands nearly 2 million years ago australopithecus lion lived in eastern african grasslands and they have brain capacity brain capacity is 600 cc and study about fossil stones that they hunted with stone weapons. They hunted with stone weapons, but they ate fruit. But they ate fruit. This was about Australopithecus. So Australopithecus, they lived in Africa two million years ago. The fossils, these Australopithecus fossils were found in Africa and they lived in Eastern African grasslands and their brain capacity was 600 cc. They used to hunt stone weapons. They used to, for hunting, they used stone weapons but they ate fruits. It is about Australopithecus. The next stage in human evolution is Homo habilis. Handy man or tool man. So this Homo habilis, this stage was, so this was the first stage which resembles human being like called hominid. Human being like this stage resembles. First, this is the first stage which resembles human being. So they are called hominid or homo habilis. Their brain capacity lies between 650 to 800 cc. They did not eat meat. They did not eat meat. So this is about homo habilis. They are also called anti man or two man. So their brain capacities or uh, capacity was 650 to 800 cc. They did not eat meat. The next one is Homo erectus. Or Java man. Nearly 1.5 million years ago, fossils were found in Java in the year 1891. Fossils found in Java tells the next stage that is Homo erectus. Homo erectus. So nearly 1.5 million years ago, this Homo erectus were 
live and in 1891 fossils found in java tells about the next stage in human evolution that is homo erectus their brain capacities is nearly 900 cc and they ate meat they ate meat this is about homo erectus or java man the next age is Neanderthal man. So their brain capacities was nearly one thousand four hundred. CC brain capacities were nearly 1400 cc. They lived between 1 lakh to 40,000 years back. They lived nearly 1000, 1 lakh to 40,000 years back. They lived nearly 1 lakh to 40,000 years back. The, their brain capacities was 1400 cc and the main feature of this neanderthal man they used to eat to protect their body to protect their body to protect their bodies and they buried another point is they buried dead body dead bodies in a soil. So these two are very important point about Neanderthal man. They, they live nearly 1 lakh thousand to 4, 1 lakh to 40 thousand years back and their brain capacities were 1400 cc. They use eyes to protect their bodies and they buried dead bodies in the soil. This is about the Neanderthal man and the last stage in evolution of man is Homo sapiens. So the modern humans in European region called as The modern humans in European region called as crop madman man. They called as crop madman man and their brain capacity is nearly 1650 cc. And Homo sapiens arise in Africa and moved to different continents and they moved to different continents and developed into distinct races and developed into distinct races. Homo sapiens rise in Africa and they moved to different continents and they developed into distinct races. During ice age it's nearly between 75,000 to 10,000 years. More than Homo sapiens arose. More than Homo sapiens arose. And prehistoric cave heart or developed nearly 18,000 years back. Agriculture came nearly 10,000 years back and human settlements started. When ag agriculture came into exist, then human settlement started. So, the in Homo sapiens, the modern 
humans in European region were called as Krug Marlin man. Their brain capacities were 1650 cc, whereas Homo sapiens, modern Homo sapiens brain capacities 1600 cc. And these Homo sapiens arose arised in Africa and they moved to different continents and they developed into distinct races. So, in ice age between 75,000 to 10,000 years back modern Homo sapiens arose and prehistoric cave are developed 18,000 years back and agriculture came into existence nearly 10,000 years back, 10,000 years back and human settlements started and rest what happened rest what happened we see is uh, in the history of human uh, evolution is uh, nothing but decreasing declining civilization declining civilization it is about the origin and evolution of man so six stages are very important they will ask for three marks so this ice age every year you have to remember for your competitive exams. They will ask name the stages in evolution of man you have to write six stages. So one is first stage is Dryopathicus and Rama. Atticus. Second stage is Astralopathicus. Then third is Homo habilis. Then Homo erectus. Then Neanderthal man then we have homo sapiens see species in small letter so these six stages we have to write when they ask for three marks so this completes chapter evolution so in this chapter they may ask define evolution one mark and what is abiogenesis and what is biogenesis and who disproved abiogenesis Louis Pasteur, Francisco Reddy they disproved abiogenesis theory and who gave chemical evolution of life Oparin and Aldane and who proved the chemical evolution of life Ure and Miller by that uh, experimental setup they, by doing the experiment they, dis, they proved the chemical evolution of life that experimental setup of Ura and Miller will come for 3 marks only the diagrammatic will come for 3 marks if they ask explain again it will be 5 marks then evidences of evidences for evolution another paleontological studies that we have to that will come for 3 marks and difference between homologous organs and analogous organs again with example is 3 marks then adoptive radiation Galapagos Islands Darwin features that will again for 2 marks and evidences for evolution the anthropogenic action if they ask like that you have to give uh, you have to explain with industrial melanism and development of antibiotic resistant microbes, development of pesticides, uh, uh, resistant insects. So that all you have to explain under anthropogenic action. Then biological evolution, two key concepts were given by Darwin that is branching descent and natural selection. Then Lamarckism theory, mutation theory. Mutation theory given by Igor D. Varis. What is saltation? Again one mark single step large mutation is saltation then what is atavism Re sudden reappearance of ancestral character is called atavism then arde weinberg equilibrium and factors affecting arde weinberg equilibrium in that gene flow genetic drift genetic recombination mutation natural selection you have to explain 
and this Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is uh, seen in large population and random mating, sexually reproducing organisms. So this Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium will come for again 5 marks and with the diagrammatic representation natural selection will come for 3 marks. After that a brief account of evolution in that you may get one more question and when coming to the origin and evolution of man this they will ask the steps in human evolution you have to write this in order only so don't write here and there you have to write in this order only to get marks understood so read your textbook thoroughly each line in your textbook is your competitive question so read properly and repeated reading help you to score very good marks in your exams. Thank you.